Hello everyone, this is Brianna Rutter, author of one of my most popular books, The Natural Hair Bible, and founder of HowToBlackHair.com. For this style, I will be teaching you how to do the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. The beauty about this style is that it is completely unique. I've created this style so that you can do your Senegalese twist a lot faster, the technique will be a lot easier, and the takedown will be extremely quick. So in order to do this style, you first have to know how to do a couple of things because this is an advanced hairstyle. You have to know how to do cornrow braids as well as crochet braids and Senegalese twists. You will be combining all three of these elements to create this unique look. So now back on to the perimeter crochet Senegalese twist. The style itself involves for you to Senegalese twist the perimeter of your head. So that way it will blend very seamlessly with your crocheted area. So since the rest of your hair is being braided into cornrow braids, you have to crochet your Senegalese twist onto your braid pattern to complete your look. The thing about doing this is that when it's time to actually take down your Senegalese twist, you can just slide them off of your actual cornrow braids. So that way taking them down is extremely fast. Or you could trim off the Senegalese twist from the top of your braids so that way you don't even have to slide them out. The thing is, is that you don't have to unravel by hand. You can simply take the entire twist off of your braid pattern. The only twist you have to take down by hand are your perimeter Senegalese twist. So in order to do this style, you can do this with two different types of techniques. You can actually pre-make your Senegalese twist, which I have done. I've done that with some of the hair and the rest of the hair will be used to Senegalese twist the perimeter or you can actually loop braiding hair onto your braid pattern and then Senegalese twist it while it's crocheted on your head. Both techniques are easy, but I prefer to pre-make the twist first so that way installing them will be extremely fast. So now that you understand the techniques that involves this hairstyle, the following materials you will need to achieve the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist will be seven packages of braiding hair. You will also need a wide tooth comb, a rat tail comb for parting your hair, duck bill clips to keep your hair sectioned, hair cutting scissors, and then to seal the ends, you will need a large t-shirt or towel with a cup of hot water. And you will also need rubber bands and bobby pins for styling. So once you have all of your supplies and materials ready, in the very next step, step number two, I will be teaching you how to do your crochet braid pattern for your perimeter crochet Senegalese twist. Hello and welcome to step number two of the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist hairstyle. In this step, I will be teaching you how to do your crochet braid pattern for this specific look. Now remember, this look is an advanced hairstyle, so you have to know how to do a couple of things in order to achieve this look. First, you have to know how to do Senegalese twist, cornrow braids, as well as crochet braids. If you need any more additional help on these styles, make sure to refer to my website, howtoblackhair.com, for those hairstyling DVDs. Now back to this braid pattern. I will be showing you how to do your crochet braid pattern for this look by showing you the direction of how you have to braid your cornrow braids. Once you braid all of your cornrow braids, along the way, you will actually feed one end of each cornrow braid into one another. And I will show you more specifically how that looks. When you're done with your braid pattern, you will only have one tail end of a braid that hangs down. That braid will then be sewn onto the braid to the side of your head with your already prepared weaving needle. In order to prepare your weaving needle, all you have to do is cut off a little bit of weaving thread, put it through the eye of the needle, bring the two loose ends together, and create a knot. That's simply how you prepare your weaving needle, and then after you've done that, I will show you how to sew the tail end of your braid down to your braid pattern to complete your look. And remember, you have to leave out your perimeter hair in order to do your Senegalese twist as well. As you can see, I am almost finished with my braid pattern for the crochet style. The edges of my hair that are braided in individual braids is the perimeter area that will contain the Senegalese twist. The perimeter will not be crocheted. That's why your hair has to be loose to do the Senegalese twist around the perimeter of your head. 
And then the rest of my hair is cornrow braided, but I've saved my last braid to show you how you have to connect your cornrow braids along the way. So if I tilt my head down, you can see that my braids are pretty much almost finished. And then a little bit as time go on, you will see that in the back, each braid is connecting. So for now, what I'm going to do is finish my very last braid, show you how to connect the braids in the back, and then also how to sew the braid down with your weaving needle and thread. So now I'm just gonna grab a little hair here in the front. This is my last section. I'm gonna pinch a little bit of hair off and begin braiding. Remember, if you don't know how to braid, make sure to refer to my website for further help on how to actually do cornrow braids. So now as I'm nearing the end of my last braid, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my previous cornrow braid to this braid here. So now that I've ended this braid, I've braided all the hair that I have for it. I grab the tail end of my previous braid and I place it onto one of the legs of my cornrow and then I continue to braid. This was done for all of the braids you see here that's in the back of my head. So now when you're constantly connecting the braids, you end up with one individual tail end of a braid that hangs down from your last cornrow braid. So I'm just gonna twist the ends a little bit to finish this. So now as you can see, I have one tail end of a cornrow braid that hangs down here. And if you observe from my other braids, each cornrow braid was added onto each one until there was literally one left. Now, in order to make sure that your braid pattern is secure and your braids do not unloosen, when you're actually crocheting your Senegalese twist, you have to sew down the tail end of your last braid. Now, in order to sew it down properly, you want to make sure there are no bulges or that it doesn't come unloose. So instead of sewing this down to this pattern back here or this base back here, you have to sew it next to one of your cornrow braids. That way the braid is very flat when you're actually crocheting your Senegalese twist. So instead of sewing the tail end of your last cornrow braid onto your last cornrow braid, you want to put it in between here so that it lays very flatly. So now I'm just gonna push this braid right in between these two spaces here. And I wanna make sure that I'm sewing this braid to my last cornrow braid that I actually braided. So use one hand to keep the braid pressed down. You're gonna grab your needle and thread and go underneath your last cornrow and then go through the tail end of your last cornrow braid. So you're gonna go underneath and then through the tail end of your last cornrow braid. Push the needle through, wrap the string around twice, pull your needle through to create a knot. Once you've created a knot, you're gonna to continue to sew up along until the tail end of this braid is completely secure. So we're gonna go over just a little bit. We're gonna go underneath this cornrow braid and through the tail end braid that we have here in the middle. Wrap the string around twice. Pull through.
So now once you've secured your last knot, you're gonna open it up and just tighten it just a little bit more and then you're gonna cut the string. It's okay if you have a little bit of hair right as you can see here that hangs down because when you're crocheting, it's gonna lay very flat against your braid. So now next, you're gonna snip this off and that completes your actual crochet braid pattern. This is the braid pattern for the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. So now, once you've completed your braid pattern, in the very next step, step number three, I will be showing you step by step how to do the Senegalese twist and crochet technique. Here we are in step number three of the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. In this step, I will be showing you how to actually do your Senegalese twist as well as the Senegalese crochet technique. First, I will be showing you how to do your Senegalese twist for your perimeter area of hair. And then I will show you two different ways you can create your Senegalese twist for your crochet area. One way will be by pre-making your Senegalese twist extensions, and then the second way will also be how to actually create the Senegalese twist on top of your braid pattern. As you can see, I have already done Senegalese twist around the entire perimeter of my head. Now, next, I'm gonna go on and show you how to actually pre-make your Senegalese twist, but before I do that, I wanted to show you quickly how to actually do a Senegalese twist. Remember that this is an advanced hairstyle, so you have to know how to do braids as well as Senegalese twists to make this look very easy for you to achieve. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do a twist. So I've saved a small portion of my hair in the front here, and this is the last Senegalese that I have to twist to complete the entire perimeter of my head. Now what you want to do is make sure that you divide your last section or whatever section you're working on in half. Then you're going to grab your extensions and you're going to locate the very middle of it at the top. So you just want to make sure that both sides are even so that way your twist is consistent when you near the ends. So now you locate the middle section of your extension which is here for me and I'm going to place that directly at my scalp. Now the next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna use your less dominant hand, which is my left hand, and you're gonna hold your real hair and your extension there. You're just holding it so that it doesn't shift as you're twisting. You're gonna grab the hair on the other side and you're gonna twist towards your face. So I'm going towards my face, twisting like that. Make sure that you have all of your hair as you're twisting towards your face. So after you've twisted very securely, you're gonna hold that hair. Make sure you don't let it go. You're gonna go on the other side and you're gonna twist that towards your face as well. Now once you've twisted far enough, you're gonna take the left side and overlap it over the right side. And then you're gonna twist both sides like that. Cross it again. Twist both sides. Cross it again twist both sides. So you have to consistently do this so that way it actually forms a rope twist or a Senegalese twist and that way it doesn't unravel. If you're noticing that your twist is becoming loose, that's because you were losing your grip or you weren't twisting tight enough before you rotated each section. So with consistency, the Senegalese twist will turn out just fine. But if you need further help and more details on how to actually achieve Senegalese twist, you have to refer to my DVD to do so. And in my DVD, I show you how to prepare the hair, how to part your hair so that way you have consistent twists, how to even style your Senegalese, how to take care of your hair, so on and so forth. So you just keep twisting till you're near the ends, and then once you're near the ends, you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut off any fray hairs at the very bottom of your twist, as well as any fray hairs that may stick out along the way, so your twists look very neat. After I do this, I'm gonna show you how to actually pre-make your Senegalese twist, and then I'm gonna show you also how to install them on your crochet braid pattern. So now that my perimeter Senegalese twists are finished, I will be showing you how to pre-make your Senegalese twist. So here on my table, I have already pre-made all of my Senegalese twists. Here I have some pieces that are colored, 
and then I have some pieces that are black. You can mix color in if you want to. You can do it all a natural color or you can get a little bit more creative and actually do colored pieces. I'm gonna show you how to actually pre-make these so that way you don't have to twist them by hand when you crochet them on your head. They're already pre-made so that way when you loop them onto your braid pattern, it's really easy and fast. So I'm gonna show you how I make them and I make them on a wig clamp. This is a wig clamp that you use to set a mannequin head on top of when you're creating wig pieces or styling a mannequin head. This is a wig clamp, it moves around this knob here so that way you can adjust the mannequin head to where you want it to be. What I'm gonna do is use this circular part here as a base for creating the top part of the extension piece because this is where you actually have to loop the twist through when you're crocheting, which is the top of this Senegalese twist. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You want to grab your braiding hair and you want to pinch off an amount of hair that you're normally using when creating the size of your Senegalese twist. Now you could put the hair on your lap if you wanted to or you can just secure it, just place it right there underneath your wig clamp. Next what you're going to do is locate the middle section here because that's the area that's going to go around this actual part of your wig clamp here. But first you have to twist it really tight. The reason why you have to twist it first before you start twisting it on your clamp is because it keeps the loop at the top of the sending least tidy. Now the problem is, is if you don't twist this first before you actually begin twisting on your wig clamp, the top of your Senegalese twist, the pre-made twist, will look very fuzzy. It won't look as tight as these are. These were twisted, so as you can see, it actually looks a little bit twisted there and it keeps the hairs closer together so that it's not poofy and big. So you have to make sure to twist your extension hair like that. Then you're going to place it around the clamp like this and continue twisting your Senegalese twist. So the same technique of twisting that you do at your scalp is the same technique you do when you're actually twisting on the clamp or the uh, movable head of your wig clamp. Now if you don't have a wig clamp and you really need to find something of a small circumference that you can put your Senegalese twist extension on, you could use a marker. You could put a marker in between your thighs to hold it and then you can twist some hair around that. You can even use a uh, CD case, a not a CD case, but a CD holder or DVD holder that um, you support CDs or DVDs on top of as a collection. You can use that little piece because it has a small circumference of a um, piece that sticks up as it's holding the DVD case or a collection of uh, CDs. So now you're just gonna keep twisting until you reach the bottom. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna trim off any uh, frayed hairs that stick out. And also you're gonna trim the ends so it looks more tidy. Now that I've shown you how to pre-make your Senegalese twist, I'm gonna show you how to crochet them onto your braid pattern. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to crochet braiding hair and Senegalese twist those as well, if you prefer another option. So first, we're gonna install pre-made Senegalese twist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my beater and I'm gonna insert my beater first before I actually worry about adding my Senegalese twist. When you're inserting your beater onto your braid, it's very, very, very important that you start at the very beginning of your braid. The reason why is because if I added the beater here, for example, and placed my Senegalese twist there, do you see how much space would be left? So that way when I actually push my twist back, it will be spaces at the beginning of my braid. You have to get as close to the beginning of your braid as possible. And that's where you wanna insert your hair beater to actually add your crochet for your Senegalese twist. So now I'm gonna grab my twist and I'm gonna do it from the end first because it's easier to add it at its end. And I'm just gonna fold it so that way I can insert it through the eye of the beater a lot better. So now I just insert it through the eye of the beater And then I'm gonna pull the beater through my braid. Pull the twist down, and I'm gonna locate the top of my Senegalese twist and open it up. Once I open it up, I'm gonna add the end of the Senegalese twist through its opening, just like that. And then I'm gonna pull it straight down. Do you see how easy that is? 
I did not have to stay up here for a very long time and twist, 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 twist all the way down. Because it was already pre-made, all I had to do was crochet it at the very beginning of my braid pattern. This is gonna make installing your Senegalese twist so fast. This is such a unique and cool idea that's gonna speed up your installation process. And also, so that way when it is time to take them down, you can simply just unravel it because you just looped it around your braid. This is the way I prefer to do my crochet Senegalese twist. But I'm gonna show you another example just in case you don't wanna pre-make them. The other example I'm gonna show you requires you to add braiding hair onto your braid pattern and then manually Senegalese twisting. The reason why I don't prefer that way is because I have to spend a lot of time up at the top of my head twisting. But pre-making them, you just have to loop them on and then you go right to the next one to fill in all of your braids. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to add braiding hair to your braid pattern. You wanna locate the middle section of this and what you want to do is uh, twist it just a little bit so that way you can put it through the eye of your beard very easily. You're gonna place that through there. Make sure you gather all the hair really good. And then you're gonna push the beater through your braid pattern. So I'm gonna go right up and I'm gonna go a little bit over the space of my Senegalese Twisted. Just make sure that you're eyeing about how much space is in between each twist so that way it looks natural. So I'm just gonna go a little bit over right there. I'm gonna push my beater all the way through. I'm gonna take the hair out of the beater. Take the beater out of my head. And here's that loop that I had right here. Now open the loop, bring the hair through one time, and then push all of your hair down, make it very neat and secure. Make sure it's very tidy against your braid, just like that. Open it up two ways. Make sure it's as even as possible. And then Senegalese twist. So I'm gonna twist to the direction towards my face and the other one will twist towards the direction of my face as well. I'm gonna overlap left over right and twist. Twist, twist. So as you can see, you can do this technique as well if you do not want to pre-make your Senegalese twist, but that means you're gonna have your hands up a lot longer to actually add them. So this is perfect if you choose to do it this way. And it's also perfect if you choose to actually install them a lot faster by pre-making them. Now that I've shown you how to do the Senegalese crochet technique, you're going to continue the same process over your entire head until you've installed all of your extensions. The beauty about this style is that if you pre-make your Senegalese twist extensions, you can actually install them and complete your style very quickly. But also the other option is to loop braiding hair underneath your braid pattern and then Senegalese twist from there. Either way is fine, one technique is just a little bit bit faster when you are installing your twist. So remember, an important note to keep in mind is that when you are putting your Senegalese twist on your braids, you wanna make sure that the very first twist you add to your cornrow braid is as close to the beginning of the braid as possible. So that way there's not a huge gap from your perimeter twist to the actual twist on your cornrow braids. So now that you know how to do the technique and then after installing all of your twists in the very next step, Step number four, I will be teaching you how to hot water seal the ends of your twist to prevent them from unraveling. Hello and welcome to step number four of the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. In this step, I will be teaching you how to hot water seal the ends of your twist to prevent them from unraveling. The thing about doing Senegalese twists is that if you are consistently twisting from the roots to the ends, your twist will not unravel. But to prevent any chance of them unraveling, it's best called to actually dip the ends in hot water to do so. When you are hot water sealing the ends, what happens is that the hair slightly melt, but visually you don't see this. So that way when the twist actually dry, you will actually notice that the ends feel a little bit more stiff than how they previously felt. 
The fibers are just slightly melting under a very high temperature so that way all the fibers can bind together which stops the twist from unraveling. So when dealing with hot water, I want you to be very careful and you also assume all responsibility and risk that goes with using hot water to do so. Before hot water sealing the ends of your Senegalese twist, there are a couple of materials that you need in place to make sure that everything goes smoothly. First thing first is that you need a large t-shirt or a towel to help dry your twist after sealing them. You will need a cup of very hot water to actually seal the ends of your twist and then you will need hair cutting scissors to cut off any frayed ends or undesirable hairs that stick out of your twist so that way your twist look very neat. So now, when getting your cup of hot water ready, you want to make sure that your water was already previously steaming or boiling so that the water is as hot as it possibly can be. Also, I prefer that you use a cup whose handle is not affected by the temperature of the cup. So what I mean by this is that if at any moment you need to quickly move your cup or adjust what you're doing, you can grab a handle that's cool to touch because the handle is not affected by the heat of the cup. So now first to begin, you want to gather all of your twists that you will be dipping. I prefer that you work with small sections at a time, but this is also dependent on the size of your twist. If you have very thick and big twists, you can only put so many twists into your cup of water. If you have thinner twists or less twists than what uh, you see here, maybe you can gather all of your twists and dip them at once. But for my specific size and the length as well, it's best that I split the twist in half and only dip one half at a time. Now, before you dip your twist, make sure to adjust your towel or your large t-shirt in place to catch any hot water and also to enclose the twist around itself or enclose a towel around the twist when you're pulling it out of the water. So if you can, you can rest the shirt on your chest or you can just sit it right in your lap so that way as your twist is coming out with one hand, you're using the protection of a towel to actually catch the hot water. So what I'm going to do is gather half of my twist and I'm going to make sure I'm raking them all the way through so that way I have all of the ends together. I'm just going to slightly twist all of the twists so that I have a very secure grip on my actual Senegalese twist. Then I'm going to cover all of these ends into the hot water. So making sure I gather all of them on this side. I dip the twist in. Make sure not to lean on your cup and not to lean on the table because you don't want to accidentally knock the cup over. Only make sure that your twists are inside of the water and you're twirling it around to release any air bubbles. So now that that's soaked, I'm going to grab my large t-shirt, which is why you need this in your lap first, on your chest first. Now as you're pulling your twist out, Put the twist against the towel and then close the towel around the twist so that you're not in contact with any hot water. Wrap the towel around and you're gonna squeeze it dry. You'll know when it's ready because when you touch it, it's just gonna be slightly warm. It's not gonna be steaming hot. So now just rake your fingers through once again. Slightly twist all of your twists together so they're all bunched up so you can identify any straight ends or loose ends or pieces of hair that stick out so that your twists look neat. Just going to use your scissors and you're going to cut off any hairs that you see. So as you can see the twists don't look melted, it just slightly melted from the hot temperature which stops your twist from unraveling whatsoever. So now after you've done doing your section, you're gonna move on to the rest of your sections until you're finished sealing all of your Senegalese twists. So as you can see, hot water sealing the ends of your Senegalese twists are very easy. You just want to make sure that you have your materials ready and that you're using a cup that has a handle that's not affected by the hot water. So that way if you have to move it at any moment or adjust your table or setting, you don't have any worries with a hot handle because it can be cool to touch. So just make sure that you're using your towel to be a barrier of protection when taking your twist out of your hot water. After sealing all of your twists, go ahead and trim the ends. And then once you're finished in the very next step, step number five, I will show you the finished results to the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist.
Welcome to step number five, the finished results to the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. So now that your hairstyle is complete, in the very next step, step number six, I will be showing you three very creative styles you can do with your new look. Welcome to step number six of the Mrs. Rudder's Perimeter Crochet Senegalese Twist. In this step, I will be teaching you three very creative hairstyles you can do with your new look. One style will be called the Dutch Bun Updo, another will be called the Double Dutch Braid, and then another style will be called the Double Side Twist Bun. In order to achieve these styles, all you will need is a couple of bobby pins and rubber bands. The very first hairstyle that I'm going to show you is called the Dutch Bun Updo. You want to separate half of your hair, the back half and the front half, and you want to put the back half in a Dutch braid. After you've done that, you're gonna gather all of your hair, put it into a bun and bobby pin in place. For style number one, this is the Dutch Bun Updo. Now 
Next, for style number two, will be the double dutch braid. For style number two, I will be showing you the double dutch braid. When doing this style, you have to make sure that all of your twists are laid down in the direction you would like for them to lay. And then divide your hair in half and begin braiding your dutch braid on both sides. Remember that a dutch braid is an overhand braid and a french braid is an underhand braid. So we're going to be braiding an overhand braid on both sides of our head to complete the look. And this is style number two, the double dutch braid. Make sure to separate your braids just a little bit for more body and fullness. For style number three, I will be showing you how to do the double side twist bun. To do this style, first make sure that your Senegalese twists are laying in the direction that you would like. You want to make sure that your crocheted braid pattern isn't showing through your twist. So after you've done that and laid your twist in the way you would like for them to lay, loosely divide your twist into two sections with your fingers. For each section, what you're going to do is slightly two strand twist your Senegalese twist together and then at the very ends you're going to secure each side with a rubber band. After that you're going to loop the two ends together all around one another bobby pin in place to complete your look.
For style number three, this is the double side twist bun. So as you can see, I've shown you three very creative ways to style your new look. So now in the very next step, step number seven, I will be showing you how quick and easy and simple it is to take down and remove your extensions. Hello and welcome to step number seven of the Mrs. Rudder's Permature Crochet Senegalese Twist. In this step, I will be showing you how quick and easy it is to take down and remove your extensions. First, I will show you how quickly you can remove your crochet Senegalese twist, and then I will show you how easy it is to also take down your perimeter Senegalese twist. To show you how to take down your Senegalese twist, I'm gonna show you on this twist here. What you want to do is locate the base where it's added to your braid pattern and simply unloop it. So you're just gonna pull that up and pull your twist out. And that's how simple and easy it is to take down these twists. And as you can see, the twist is fully intact. So once you take down all of your crochet twists, you can save them to put them into your head for another install when you want to. So that way you don't have to retwist these again. You don't have to cut them out of your head or take them down manually. You just simply have to unloop them and pull them from your braid. So now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to also take down your perimeter Senegalese as well. And I'm gonna demonstrate on this twist here. What you simply want to do, it's very easy. Locate the end of your twist, separate with your fingers, and then continue separating, working your way up. And then just gently smooth your hair out of both sides, and you're finished. As you can see, taking down your Senegalese twist is completely easy, especially when it comes to your crochet twist. All you have to do is locate the base of that twist and simply unloop it with your hands, and then it's completely removed. Because the twists are also intact when removing them, you can always reinstall them when you want to do this hairstyle once again. And then for your permitted twist, you're simply going to locate the end and gently unravel with your hands, working your way to your root. So that is it for the Mrs. Rudder's Permitter Crochet Senegalese Twist. For more on our DVDs, blog, and online store, check out howtoblackhair.com for more. Thanks for watching.